One day, in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. Being entirely honest with oneself is a good exercise. Most people do not really want freedom because freedom involves responsibility and most people are frightened of responsibility. Unexpressed emotions will never die. They are buried alive and will come forth later in uglier ways. We are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love. Out of your vulnerabilities will come your strength. He that has eyes to see and ears to hear may convince himself that no mortal can keep a secret. If his lips are silent, he chatters with his fingertips. Betrayal oozes out of him at every pore. Where does a thought go when it's forgotten? A woman should soften but not weaken a man. Religious doctrines are all illusions. Religion is an attempt to get control over the sensory world in which we are placed by means of the wish world which we have developed inside of us as a result of biological and psychological necessities. But it cannot achieve its end. Its doctrines carry with them the stamp of the times in which they originated. The ignorant childhood days of the human race Its consolations deserve no trust. Experience teaches us that the world is not a nursery. The ethical commands to which religion seeks to lend its weight require some other foundations instead. For human society cannot do without them. And it is dangerous to link up obedience to them with religious belief. If one attempts to assign religion its place in man's evolution, it seems not so much to be a lasting acquisition as a parallel to the neurosis which the civilized individual must pass through on his way from childhood to maturity. It is impossible to escape the impressions that people commonly use false standards of measurement they seek power, success, and wealth for themselves and admire them in others. And that they underestimate what is of true value in life. Everywhere I go, I find 
a poet has been there before me. Whoever loves becomes humble. Those who love have, so to speak, pawned a part of their narcissism. It sounds like a fairy tale, but not only that, this story of what man, by his science and practical inventions, has achieved on this earth, where he first appeared as a weekly member of the animal kingdom, and on which each individual of his species must ever again appear as a helpless infant is a direct fulfillment of all or of most of the dearest wishes in his fairy tales. All these possessions he has acquired through culture. Long ago, he formed an ideal conception of omnipotence and omniscience, which he embodied in his gods. Whatever seemed unattainable to his desires or forbidden to him, he attributed to those gods. One may say, therefore, that these gods were the ideals of his culture. No, our science is no illusion, but an illusion it would be to suppose that what science cannot give us, we can get elsewhere. The madman is a dreamer awake. Life, as we find it, is too hard for us. It brings us too many pains, disappointments, and impossible tasks. In order to bear it, we cannot dispense with palliative measures. There are perhaps three such measures. Powerful deflections, which cause us to make light of our misery. Substitutive satisfactions, which diminish it, and intoxicating substances, which make us insensible to it. Words have a magical power. They can bring either the greatest happiness or deepest despair. They can transfer knowledge from teacher to student. Words enable the orator to sway his audience and dictate its decisions. Words are capable of arousing the strongest emotions and prompting all of men's actions. Human beings are funny. They long to be with the person they love, but refuse to admit it openly. Some are afraid to show even the slightest sign of affection because of fear. Fear that their feelings may not be recognized, or even worse, may not be returned. But one thing about human beings puzzles me the most and that is their conscious effort to be connected with the object of their affection, even if it kills them slowly within. Religion is an illusion, and it derives its strength from the fact that it falls in 
with our instinctual desires. It is that we are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love, never so helplessly unhappy as when we have lost our loved object or its love. The behavior of a human being in sexual matters is often a prototype for the whole of his other modes of reaction in life. Where the questions of religion are concerned, people are guilty of every possible kind of insincerity and intellectual misdemeanor. He does not believe that does not live according to his belief. When making a decision of minor importance, I've always found it advantageous to consider all the pros and cons. In vital matters, however, such as the choice of a mate or of a profession, the decision should come from the unconscious, from somewhere within ourselves. In the important decisions of personal life, we should be governed, I think, by the deep inner needs of our nature. Neurotics complain of their illness but they make the most of it, and when it comes to taking it away from them, they will defend it like a lioness, her young. Beauty has no obvious use, nor is there any clear cultural necessity for it. Yet, civilization could not do without it. My love is something valuable to me, which I ought not throw away without reflection. The intention that man should be happy is not in the plan of creation. Men are more moral than they think and far more immoral than they can imagine. Love and work are the cornerstones of our humanness. The creative writer does the same as a child at play he creates a world of fantasy which he takes very seriously. What progress we are making. In the Middle Ages they would have burned me. Now they are content with burning my books. Properly speaking, the unconscious is the real psychic. Its inner nature is just as unknown to us as the reality of the external world. And it is just as imperfectly reported to us through the data of consciousness as is the external world through the indications of our sensory organs. Where id is, there shall ego be. The interpretation of dreams is the royal road to a knowledge of the unconscious activities of the mind.
A man should not strive to eliminate his complexes, but to get in accord with them. They are legitimately what directs his conduct in the world. Poets are masters of us ordinary men in knowledge of the mind, because they drink its streams, which we have not yet made accessible to science. When a love relationship is at its height, there is no room left for any interest in the environment. A pair of lovers are sufficient to themselves. A love that does not discriminate seems to me to forfeit a part of its own value. By doing an injustice to its object, and secondly, not all men are worthy of love. How bold one gets when one is sure of being loved. Neurosis is the inability to tolerate ambiguity. Illusions commend themselves to us because they save us pain and allow us to enjoy pleasure instead. We must therefore accept it without complaint when they sometimes collide with a bit of reality against which they are dashed to pieces. Instinct of love towards an object demands a mastery to obtain it, and if a person feels they can't control the object or feel threatened by it, they act negatively towards it. Public self is a conditioned construct of the inner psychological self. There are no mistakes. It goes without saying that a civilization which leaves so large a number of its participants unsatisfied and drives them into revolt, neither has nor deserves the prospect of a lasting existence. Love, in the form of longing and deprivation, lowers self-regard. It is a predisposition of human nature to consider an unpleasant idea untrue, and then it is easy to find arguments against it. The dream is the liberation of the spirit from the pressure of external nature, a detachment of the soul from the fetters of matter. The liberty of the individual is no gift of civilization. It was greatest before there was any civilization. No neurotic harbors thoughts of suicide, which are not murderous impulses against others, redirected upon himself. We are so constituted that we can gain intense pleasure only from the contrast and only very little from the condition itself. As regards intellectual work, 
it remains a fact, indeed, that great decisions in the realm of thought and momentous discoveries and solutions of problems are only possible to an individual working in solitude. Words and magic were in the beginning one and the same thing. And even today, words retain much of their magical power. What is common in all these dreams is obvious. They completely satisfy wishes excited during the day which remain unrealized. They are simply and undisguisedly realizations of wishes. The more perfect a person is on the outside, the more demons they have on the inside. The individual does actually carry a double existence, one designed to serve his own purposes and another as a link in a chain in which he serves against or at any rate without any volition of his own. A religion, even if it calls itself a religion of love, must be hard and unloving to those who do not belong to it. Man has, as it were, become a kind of prosthetic God. Woe to you, my princess, when I come, I will kiss you quite red and feed you till you are plump. And if you are forward, you shall see who is the stronger, a gentle little girl who doesn't eat enough or a big wild man who has cocaine in his body. It would be very nice if there were a God who created the world and was a benevolent providence. And if there were a moral order in the universe and an afterlife. But it is a very striking fact that all of this is exactly as we are bound to wish it to be. Words were original magic, and with words we can make another blessed or drive them to despair. Words call forth effects and are the universal means of influencing human beings.